In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most powerful mini PCs on the market right now. What we have here is the all new 2025 ROG Nook 15, and I've had my eye on this for quite some time, been really excited about it. I saw it in action earlier this year at CES in January, but I wasn't able to test it out there. They just kind of had a demo loop. Now it's in store, so I was able to get my hands on it. And I gotta say, I mean, this thing looks absolutely amazing. Super small form factor, under three liters, and you're gonna be able to play any AAA game on this machine. Keep in mind, they do offer a couple different variants with uh, different GPU choices. You can get this with up to the RTX 5090. It supports a PCIe 5.0 SSD. In fact, we've actually got two slots in here, one 4.0, one 5.0. A brand new revamped cooling system this year that should stay a bit quieter. And even though it's coming in under three liters, we've still got plenty of IO for a machine at this form factor. The only other thing that came inside of the packaging with this was this 330 watt power supply. And I don't think we're gonna hit 330 watts with it, but it's good to know that we've got plenty if we need it. When it comes to I.O. up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports, USB Type-C, and this one here is a Gen 3.2. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and moving around back, we've got our power input, two full-size HDMI 2.1 ports, two full-size DisplayPort 2.1 ports, Thunderbolt 4 port that will run at a 40 gig protocol, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and four more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Asus, with their newer ROG line, has been trying to go with the toolless route on most of their devices, and this one's no different, so to get in here to upgrade the storage and RAM, it's pretty simple. There's a thumb screw on the back, and then we can slide the side panel right off. Now from here, we can access both of those M.2 slots, and like I mentioned, one is a PCIe 4.0, the other is a 5.0 drive, and we've got SODIMM RAM here. This came with 32 gigs, so you can upgrade all of this if you need to. And since it was designed as a gaming PC, they had to add some RGB, but it's pretty tasteful. It looks good. It's controllable from Armory Crate. Got it over here on the side and a little strip right on the front. Like I mentioned, they are offering several different configurations, but the one we have here is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 9 275HX. With this, we get 24 cores, 24 threads, 36 megabytes of cache, and it's configured in a way where we have eight performance cores. Those will clock up to 5.4 gigahertz, and 16 efficiency cores, which will clock up to 4.6. With this unit, graphics are gonna be handled by the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Ti. It's a laptop version, and like I mentioned, you can get up to the 5090 here if you wanted to. But with this, we have 12 gigs of VRAM, 115 watt TGP with a 25 watt dynamic boost, so it can get on up there and reach some really nice clocks. You can do up to 48 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM here at 6400 megahertz. We've got one M.2 PCIe 5.0 slot, so we can add really fast storage here, up to two terabytes. We've also got that PCIe 4.0 slot, so in total we can do four terabytes of storage in this unit. It also has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, and this is running Windows 11. Jumping right in here, been up and running for a little while now. I've got everything updated, a bunch of stuff installed that we're going to be testing out. And I mean, obviously with specs like this, this thing should be a pretty decent performer. We've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 275HX, 24 cores, 24 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. And of course, we're going to be using that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Ti with 12 gigs of VRAM. A couple things that I wanted to find out here were just like TDP on the CPU and TGP on that GPU. Luckily, we've got Armory Crate installed. Uh, from here, we've got a couple different performance profiles like Windows Performance Profile, Silent, it's gonna bring it way down, Performance, Turbo, and in Turbo Mode, this is usually where I stay when I'm gaming, but we've also got a Manual Mode here. It can be edited, and it kind of gives us an idea of the TDP this CPU can reach. Now, it doesn't mean it's gonna hit it all the time, but from here, we can do up to 170 watts with this 275HX. Pretty crazy. We can also change the fan curve from here. And for the GPU, TGP 100 watts up to 115, but we've also got that dynamic boost up to 25. We've got a little bit of overclocking that we can do here on that GPU in manual mode. So the base clock offset for the core here, plus 300 megahertz uh, memory core offset, we can do up to 300 megahertz overclock. But for the most part, I mean, with all of my testing here, we're actually just going to be in turbo mode. 
this is great if you really want to do a little bit of tuning with it. But uh, I've always had really good luck with either performance or turbo mode. And we don't have to worry about battery here because we've got a mini PC. In the future, I mean, if anybody wants to see this thing running in manual mode, let me know in the comments below. I could run a few benchmarks there. First thing we're going to check out are a couple benchmarks that I ran on this unit. So let's jump over there and then we'll move right into some gaming. Here's Geekbench 6, and remember, with all of these tests, we're in turbo mode from Armory Crate. We might be able to see a bit more out of these if we go into manual mode, but this is looking phenomenal. Single core, 3007, multi, 19,804. I also ran Cinebench R24, just to check out this CPU performance, and single core came in with a 126 here, beating out that M1 Max, M1 Ultra, all the way down the list. And when it comes to multi-core, this was super impressive. 2013, absolutely destroying everything else on the list here. Now it's time to check out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Steel Nomad coming in with a total score of 3,944. Our graphics FPS up top was 39.45. And the last one I ran was Time Spy, 16,990. And our graphics score was 17,625. Amazing scores here out of this mini PC. And just taking a look at the synthetics, I mean, there's no doubt that we're working with a really powerful system. But now we need to get into some real world gaming. Here's Cyberpunk 2077. We're at Ultra, 1440p with no DLSS, no frame generation. I really wanted to see what this would do at that native 1440. And I mean, it's trucking right along here. By the end of this run, I had an average of 77 FPS. In my opinion, I mean, this is more than enough. I wouldn't mind locking it down at 60. But we've got a lot more that we can get out of this. Obviously, we could add some DLSS for scaling, or we could use NVIDIA's DLSS multi-frame generation. So here it is at 1440 Ultra, just frame gen. So we're not using any kind of scaling here. It's still at a native 1440p, over 220 FPS on average. In turbo mode with this system, I mean, playing this game like it is right now, the fans on this aren't spinning up like a jet engine. It definitely doesn't sound like a laptop with these same specs. Uh, the cooling system they have here is great. We could make this thing scream if you want to by uh, adjusting that fan curve from within armory crate. But in performance in turbo mode, it's not a super loud system. I will be keeping an eye on the GPU and CPU temps, and we'll take a look at all of that by the end of the video. But the next game we have here is Hogwarts Legacy 1440p Ultra, and uh, adding a little bit of DLSS is kind of a must with this. It was doing a decent job, but when there was a lot of particle effects on screen, it did dip down. So it just took DLSS to quality, and by the end of this run, I had an average of 78 FPS. Of course, you'll see it jump up to around 100, but once we get into the city, we'll come on down just a bit. But it's totally playable like this. I also wanted to check out Marvel Rivals. We're at 1440 Ultra with DLSS set to quality. I thought we'd get a little more out of this, but then again, I mean, with this game here, I wouldn't mind playing it at 1080. And at 1080 with these same settings, we're seeing an average of 127 FPS. Here's Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, and going into this, I mean, I know how hard this is to run on lower-end systems. I actually wasn't expecting this kind of performance with just DLSS set to quality. We don't need frame gen here, I mean, unless you want to get over 140 FPS with it. We're seeing an average of 83. And the last game I tested was Doom the Dark Ages 1440p Ultra, and I did want to go up to Ultra Nightmare, but that kind of maxes out our 12 gigs of RAM here. DLSS set to quality, looking great, and it plays just fine, over 90 FPS on average. I originally went into this with it set to balanced, because I know how hard this one is to run, it's just a newer game, but uh, quality does it just fine. So obviously with a small form factor PC like this, temperatures can get quite hot, but I think what ASUS has done here with the new cooling system is pretty nice. Doesn't need to spin up as fast as last year's or older NUX. I mean, they sounded absolutely crazy when they were maxed out. This one here can get loud if you really push it to the limit, especially using that manual mode to adjust the uh, CPU fan, but performance and turbo mode aren't as loud as I thought they would be. In turbo mode from Armory Crate with that Intel Core Ultra 9 to 75HX, 1440p gaming, we averaged 77 degrees Celsius, and the maximum recorded was 93, so it did get a bit hot there, but that was running Cinebench R24. 
that maxes out all 24 cores and 24 threads for 10 minutes. And when it comes to the GPU temps here with that NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti laptop version, 1440p gaming, we averaged 67 degrees Celsius, and the maximum recorded through everything was only 72, so nowhere near thermal throttle with this unit. So overall, I'm really impressed by the performance here, and of course we would be with that 24-core, 24-thread CPU paired up with that RTX 5070 Ti. Even though it's a laptop variant, it's still putting down some really good performance. And these things aren't coming in cheap. They range anywhere from $1,800 up to like $2,700, depending on your configuration. So it's not a low-cost, small form factor mini gaming PC by any means. But with something like this coming in under 3 liters with the performance it's put now, I mean, you're going to be hard-pressed to build something in this form factor using parts off the shelf anyway. So in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. You could definitely build something that's going to put down much better performance than this, but you're not going to get this kind of form factor. I will make at least one more video with this unit, so let me know what you want to see running on this in the comments below. I do want to go into manual mode and see, you know, how much more we can get out of this unit. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the 2025 ROG NUC 15, I'll leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.